today's tool review here for you, we are reviewing the DeWalt DCBL720P1. This is the five amp hour brushless handheld blower. Okay, so normally Home Depot sells this blower here for anywhere from 179 to 199. And you can find it online, like on Amazon, for anywhere from 160 to about 200, depending on the seller. Some of the stats here on this DeWalt DCBL720P1, five amp hour brushless handheld blower. So first of all, on the box, DeWalt claims that you're getting up to 400 CFM and 90 miles per hour performance. And you're getting a high capacity five amp hour lithium ion battery. And you have a variable trigger with speed lock. And they say it's designed to withstand everyday heavy usage. And it also has a noise rating of 61 dB and that's A weighted. Now I have my sound pressure level meter here and we're going to measure that and we'll have to make sure we re that we remember to set this onto a weighting and they're claiming that the total weight for the tool is 5.5 pounds this particular kit comes with the of course the 20 volt max 5 amp hour lithium ion battery and it comes with their standard dcb 205 charger so i've just accumulated another dewalt charger so i'm probably going to be accumulating a lot of these together and, and selling them on ebay i want to try to I, I just don't need as many chargers as i have for these i'll try to switch all of them out with the newer Fast chargers, the yellow ones that are really nice, that charge the batteries a lot quicker. They're a much more premium charger. This DeWalt brushless handheld blower was manufactured in China. So it says here on the box, tool and accessories made in China, battery made in South Korea, charger made in China or Thailand. So it's like, hmm, could be either one. Could be from here, could be from there. We're not telling you. It comes with a three year battery warranty and a three year tool warranty with one year of free service from the date of purchase and 90 day money back guarantee. Okay, so I've been using this this Ryobi P2107 for the last several years. I can't even remember when I bought it. It's been so long, but I believe this is probably their first generation. This one goes for about uh, 80 bucks or so. And this one here, strangely enough, they claim this one has 150 miles per hour with 200 CFM. You know, you, you know you're talking 60 miles per hour more wind than the DeWalt. So I have here my digital anemometer. Okay, now if you're not familiar with a digital anemometer, this is what it looks like here. So watch this. So what happens is when the wind blows into it, it tells you how many miles per hour it is. So this thing doesn't lie. These guys might lie, but this guy does not lie. here inside here. This looks like you're steering right down the throat of a Pratt & Whitney jet engine. Yeah, I think this has afterburners. And the back of this jet engine is just as impressive as the front. Okay, now to put the tube on, you can see it's keyed. See that keyhole right there? And then this feature here on the tube goes into that keyhole. Right there, and it just snaps right into place. You see there's an unlock hole here right on the bottom of the unit here and you and if you look back in there you can see that black plastic latch in there. You stick a flathead screwdriver in there and you just pop up the latch. See how it moves up there and then you can pull the tube out. Now as you look inside the F-16 jet engine there you can see what happens as we use the screwdriver here to go up and down on that latch there. See how it, it lowers it so that it doesn't latch into the tube anymore. And there is the whole kit all laid out nicely for you. But look how much I paid for it, huh? $99, huh? That's the steal of the century there, people. So what was happening was our particular Home Depot store had, had four of these sitting on the floor in a closeout stack. I guess they were getting rid of them and it worked because I took care of one of them for them. Okay, so this is our variable speed trigger here. So the more you push it in, the faster it goes, right? So you can lock it on by moving the lock lever all the way back like this and there, just like that. If you look here at the, the locking lever here, the more you lift it up, you rotate it up here, see how it starts to move down the trigger there. 
So that's how you can set some of your max speeds. Okay, so here it is close up so you can see it better here. So as you pull the lever back, it just lifts up the trigger there and then you rotate it back into place so you can set it any way you want it to. Okay, now the battery just slides right in here like this. Now that the battery is hooked up to our DeWalt handheld blower here, let's see how fast this blower can blow as we adjust the lever. I'm going to operate it just from the lever at first just to see how it does. See that? It goes higher and higher. Now if you just operate the trigger by your fingers here, so there it is blowing in low, you can hear it going higher and higher. And on this particular kit, I'm so glad that DeWalt gave us the batteries here that have the battery checker on it so you can tell if you're doing okay there now one of the things that does annoy me however about this DeWalt blower is that if you look here at this and all around the body here there's no way that you can operate this with an electrical cord if you had to like supposing your battery dies and you're like oh no but of course I have plenty of batteries anyway it doesn't really matter that's never been an issue for me but it would be nice if they would have included a feature in here to be able to plug this blower in to an electric cord and plug it into the wall unlike this kit here this is the DeWalt job site cordless fan here now we did a tool review on this last week and I'll put a link to it down in the description for you so you can go check that out you got to check it out we did a great tool review on this one with all sorts of drop testing and water testing and everything I mean come on even the job site fan here allows you to run corded if you need to see right back here you just flip down the door there now you can plug in an extension cord if your battery dies on you I mean this is ridiculous even my cheap $79 Ryobi blower here has it where you take off the battery and you just flip up this little slider there and there's your electrical plug-in right there operate it with battery mode you just slide the door back up and you put the battery in so anyway I'm left scratching my head on this one folks because I'm thinking you know really DeWalt you're expecting people to pay almost $200 for this blower here and yet it has less features than this one here this $79 Ryobi blower here is eating your lunch Okay, so at 105 miles an hour, the DeWalt blower here actually exceeded DeWalt's own claims on the box of 90 miles per hour. So now we're going to try to calculate the CFM. Of okay, so now we're going to measure the diameter here across the opening. Okay, so we have about three and a half inches across there. Okay, so in order for this anemometer here to calculate the CFM, which is cubic feet per minute, we have to give it the area. We have to tell it what the area is that it's measuring. So we're going to start here with the area equals pi r squared. So the area equals pi, pi times 1.75 squared. That's our radius because the diameter was three and a half inches. So the radius is 1.75. And when you run that into your calculations there you come up with the area equals 9.62 square inches and we can check that here online just to double check our math we can check it on the Google the area of a circle calculator there okay. now the only problem is this is an, is an inches square but the meter here needs to have it in feet squared. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a the area there is 9.62 inches squared. We're going to multiply it by 1 over 144 and the reason is is so that to get from feet squared to inches squared this is called dimensional analysis and to make these two cancel out here so that we'll be left with feet squared you have to divide that number by 144 here. So that means we take our area equals 9.62 and divide it by 144. 
and we end up with 0 0.0668 feet squared. Okay, now the reason why we divide by 144 here is because if you look at what a square foot is, it's 12 inches by 12 inches. That's 144 square inches equals one square foot. 0 0.0668. This is the number that we will enter into the anemometer to help it calculate the CFM. All right, so here we go. We'll turn it on now. So as you can see, when we had it right up against the output of the tube here, we were measuring well over 500 CFM. And once we brought the distance to about maybe six inches or so, about this far away from the tube, then it had dropped down around the 300, 400 range there in CFM. So again, we don't know why the difference. I'm sure they have their own different methodology of calculating CFM. Maybe they measured it several inches away also, like we did. We don't know. But at least we know it's, it's in that high CFM ballpark range. Okay, so now we're going to test the sound pressure level here with my SPL meter. And we're going to see how loud this is. We'll take measurements all around it. Turn it on now. And let's see what we're getting here. All right, so we're getting 92, 93 here. Pretty much no matter where we go around it, we're getting around 90-ish. I'll check around the back. We got 100 on the back. That's because of the air suction coming in there. And 92, 93 around the side here. And then where the air is coming out, even louder than 100. Louder than 110. So we got 115 decibels about, about nine inches away from the end of the tube. So where is it that it, we would find 61 decibels like they show in the box? All right, so look at this. We're 20 feet away from the blower right now, and we're still getting 71 decibels. We can't even get anywhere near what the box says, which is 61 decibels. So this part, at least, isn't making sense at all to us. Well, you saw it with your own eyes, folks. I don't know why we got such a huge difference in, in sound pressure level than from what they got. So again, we don't know their methodology, what they did, what equipment they used, how far away they were saying that they were getting the 61 decibels. We just simply don't know. So that's really the only spec that's way far off here from what's printed on the box. Test here with the DeWalt going full blast. Yeah, so you can see that in all of these little pocket areas here, the DeWalt had no problem scooping out those leaves and shooting them up. Okay, so now we'll come through here with the DeWalt and try it in this area here. So you can definitely feel there's a lot more wind speed coming out of the DeWalt here. And then it really actually reached under the grass. You could see it lifted up a little bit and it got all of the leaves to come out of there pretty good. All right, so one of the things I think is cool about this is um, this has so much power. Watch this, you'll actually see a kickback from it. You put it on full blast. It wants to force it this way. And if you aim it towards the ground, you'll really see the effects of the thrust. <laughs> just kind of pulls it away. You could float around the space station with this thing. Okay, so now we want to take this DeWalt blower and run it through a battery of testing to see how long it will last on each one of these batteries. 
Okay, so we have all of the batteries fully charged here. What we're going to do is operate this DeWalt handheld blower here and operate it at full speed all the way until it cuts off. And we're going to do it here with this five amp hour battery. And we're also going to test battery life of this DeWalt handheld blower with the 1.5 amp hour battery here from my impact driver. And lastly, I want to see how long this DeWalt handheld brushless blower here will last on this six amp hour flex volt battery. Okay, so I'm going to slide the five amp hour battery in there. Okay, so we're going to set the blower on to max here and then we'll turn on the counter. Okay, so the unit just now cut off, so I stopped it right here at 19 minutes and two seconds. So that's how long this DeWalt blower lasted on the five amp hour battery. And by the way, I had to put this roof tile here, this heavy roof tile behind it, because this thing had so much force, it kept pushing itself off the table here. Even with this big old flexible battery behind it to hold it, it still wasn't strong enough. I had to put this big weight behind it. This thing just wanted to go it actually blew itself right off of the table while we were running the test. Okay, so we'll take out the old five amp hour battery. I mean, he's nice and toasty now. And we'll slide in the new one, the one and a half amp hour battery. <clears throat> okay. So I can hear right now, it's starting to get near the end of the life on the battery. You can hear the tone of the sound of it changing. It's getting lower and lower. It's going like So it's going to click off any second now. You can hear the tone getting lower and lower. Let's see if we can squeak six minutes out of it. Oh, just shy of six minutes. I so wanted it to pass that mark, but nope. Five minutes and 56 seconds. I'm calling it time of death. Five minutes and 56 seconds. I was really rooting for you, little buddy. I really was. Okay, so now we're going to do the blower here with the giant flex volt battery on here to see how long it lasts. Now, because this thing has so much thrust, I had to really resort to putting this big brick here behind it. So here we are coming up on 22 minutes and you can hear the tone changing. So there it is, 21 minutes, 47 seconds. Okay, so now what we're going to do is pull out the battery. I wanna take its temperature doesn't feel as warm as the other battery did, that's for sure. So look at this. This thing's only measuring at about 94 degrees. Right around 94 there as well. 95 on that side. Yeah, so we're getting in the mid, about 97-ish right there. About 97 right there.
electric leaf blower here did quite a good job surviving that nine foot drop. Here you can see it just got a couple of scuffs here and a couple of more over here on the bottom of it here and just some dirt from when we did those drop tests into the grass off of the wall there. And you can see just a little bit of scuffing here on the tube. And here's some more scuffing here on the other side right there. I thought for sure this piece was going to crack when we dropped it from nine feet up onto the concrete. So this thing was very well designed and it has very tough material. She still works. Okay, so now even though this DeWalt leaf blower here is not waterproof, I wanna try a little water test here. I wanna turn this blower on and shoot some water into the back of the jet engine here and see what happens. Does it, does it stop it from working? Does it short it out? Will it spray out the front? My guess is it'll spray out the front, but let's take a look. just kind of shot it right out the front there. And so far, it doesn't seem to have affected it any. Okay, so my initial opinion of this DeWalt brushless handheld blower here is that this is a, a pretty good powerful blower. I was very impressed by how much air comes out of this thing. So much that, it, like I said, it, it has a lot of thrust. This thing wants to take off like the space shuttle. You can just feel it. Now, in terms of battery life here on this blower here from DeWalt, with the five amp hour battery that comes with it, you get about 20 minutes, maybe 19 minutes. That's more than enough time for most of us to blow the grass clippings off of our yard. And then of course, if you went down to the tinier battery, the one and a half amp, you get about six minutes of useful time. Okay, but then if you go with the flex volt battery here, like this one here, this is the six amp hour flex volt battery. This one will give you about 22 minutes or so. Now they make a bigger one that's about nine amp hours, and I'm willing to bet that would probably get you well over 30 minutes of operating time here. And this does give you about 60 seconds notice or so before it cuts out, because you can hear the tone going and you saw how rugged it was in that drop test and everything. Okay, so the only real complaint I have about this DeWalt leaf blower here is that you can't plug it into the wall. So if you are going to buy this, make sure you have a couple of batteries. This DeWalt brushless handheld blower here is going to make a great addition to our set that we already have here. This is our entry level Ryobi blower that we've been using here for blowing off all of the grass clippings uh, from the street. And then here you can see I've got Mini Me here. This is a great one to use in small confined areas or to blow off my miter saw from all of the dust and everything when we're cutting wood. Oh, and by the way, we are planning another video to compare this DeWalt blower with the Ryobi one. We're going to compare battery life, some of the wind testing and see how they stack up against each other. Well, I hope you're finding this video useful so far. And if you are, hey, do us a favor, please. Give us a thumbs up down below. Just click on that thumbs up button down there. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet. Hey, why not, man? You see what you're missing out on? All of these great videos we're uploading for you with high quality content, so you don't want to miss a single one. Make sure you click on that subscribe button down below because this is really for you folks. And when you do that, click the little gray bell icon next to it. That will tell YouTube to go ahead and give you alerts every time we upload a video because you don't want to miss one of ours. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, folks. We appreciate each and every one of you being here, and we'll see you on the next one.